Have you used MyHeritage to climb your family tree? If you haven't, then you need to check out MyHeritage and today we're gonna do a newbie's guide to the website. So howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestors' stories along the way. Now, I do not officially work for my heritage. I'm just a casual user of the website. So here we are at the My Heritage website. You can go ahead and sign up using your Facebook page, your Google account, or an email. I'm already a member, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. But if you need to change the language on my heritage, you can change it here and look at all those choices you have available to you. Before we begin diving into the website, I wanna know if you are a subscriber to that platform. If you are, write subscribe. And if you are not, Tell us if you're not subscribing and whether you're considering the platform. So now that we've logged in, my Heritage wants you to choose which family tree website you want to investigate. The one up here is the one that I created and the other threes are the ones I have been invited to collaborate on. So I'm actually gonna go to my tree. Now, right before filming this video, my Heritage changed their homepage of your tree and I love it. Love it. Good job, my Heritage. Okay, so let's go ahead and start exploring what you see here. The first thing you see right here is the person discovery tab. And when you click on that, that goes to recommendations from my heritage where they have found some trees. This tree is managed by W. Long from the United States. So you can go ahead and say, yes, that matches, I like it. And I'm gonna add 12 new people to my tree. But do you have any idea if this is a good tree or not? I can't figure out how to click on here to evaluate it. So I wouldn't use this. Sorry guys at my heritage. I know you guys really try hard, but I don't like that feature. Over here on the right, um, you can start searching for your family. So let's look for George Geisler. I like this, but I really would move this search over here if I was designing the page. But here I can go ahead and start my search and I can see there's lots of George Geislers and I can start filtering my search down there. How to filter on main heritage is a topic for another video in the future. The next part on this homepage is your recent activity. And you can see that on December 21st, I went ahead and confirmed a record match for Thomas Kramer, and I did a lot of research. Now, personally, I think this is a little too long, but I guess if you just wanna um, know what you've been working on and jump right back in, that's kind of handy. The next thing that we have to pay attention to is this sidebar over here. I kind of like this, this is, this is kind of handy. So we can click on people. And what I would like it to do is go to a list of people in my tree so I can jump to my family tree. Let's see what happens. So it takes me to the my heritage view of the tree. I can zoom out and see certain parts of the tree. Um, I can jump to the profile edit page. So the next one I do, I do like this. I um, like the photos and I can see the gallery of pictures that I have added. The next thing I can do is go to discoveries. Now this one's a little bit different from this discovery in the middle because this discovery uh, page is for all of the different ways that you can have instant discoveries and instantly expand your trees based on some other trees that are on my heritage. You can click view discovery but again, we're brought back to this page where we can't really evaluate somebody's tree. In order to do that, we need to hover over the person's name and then we can see the information people have added about that. And then finally, you get to your DNA kits. Now, I thought it would take me to a list of the kits I manage because it has that number eight on it. Right here, I manage eight kits. Instead, it just came and took me to my DNA results page. And if we scroll up a little bit, we'll see some of the ethnicity. 
Now, on my heritage, my ethnicity group is a little different. It seemed that Ancestry is the only one that figured out I'm German. <laughs> so I have this huge percentage of Scandinavian, which makes one of our viewers very happy to see so much Scandinavian because I have a small smidge of Swedish ancestors that she's trying to figure it out for me. Um, but this percentage is just a little high. <laughs> um, so anyway, I digress. So now let's go ahead and go over some other parts of the My Heritage website. If you want to get to your smart matches. Now smart matches are individual matches of other My Heritage trees with people in them to your tree with the people in them. Instant discoveries is, oh look, I found this one likely match and there's 12 other people in this person's tree, I think you should check it out and we'll add them instantly. With the smart matches, you're just gonna match one person at a time. So if you want to do tree matching, I'm gonna recommend you do smart matches. So the other uh, icons you have up here, this one takes you to record matching. And for genealogists, this is the one you like because these are basically your hints. Um, there are hints to the Ginny world family tree, so you're gonna not only just match member trees on my heritage, but it also links to the Ginny tree, to the wiki tree, and to the family search tree. So these are lots of trees that you're trying to connect all over the internet. But then you have your to records. So this is a Canadian burial, burial record, your death records, and you can go ahead and click on those and explore Hey, look, they found a record for Carrie O. o Comfort um, in my tree. She's Carrie Octavia, married name Lindberger, but she's born Comfort. So that's a unique way that um, my heritage tries to give you the naming structure. The other icon up here takes you to your DNA matches rather than your ethnicity estimate. And we can go and explore these matches. Again, this is a newbie's guide to the website so that you can find things you haven't explored before. So in home, you can go to family events. Now my heritage is kind of a social platform concept in that you can work with other family members and, and celebrate events and plan them and share the information here um, if you wanna do that. This is one thing you might not have found that's really cool is the family statistics. Let's click on that. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see some more information here. Make that go away. So of the 346 people that I have in this tree on my heritage, um, it shows me the gender makeup, the living versus the deceased, the relationship status, there's 186 that are married, 146 that are single. They're not necessarily single. I might not have found their spouses yet, but currently they're, they're single in my tree. Um, I really like common first names, so I have put a lot of browns in this tree. Um, so that's common, Townley. There's a lot of Townleys in this tree, Sparks and Townsend. Common first male names and common first female names, that's kind of fun. But next, you gotta go to the next page. This really is fun, guys. You can see places of birth. Most of the people I have in my tree are from the USA. I do have one little Switzerland and one little Swedish person, and I have 37 Germans. So going back to the ethnicity, is German really Scandinavia? We have a video that people fight about um, Finland being part of Scandinavia. I, I wonder what people would say about Germany. Um, so then you just keep going down and you see places of death, places of residence. Uh, you next can see age distribution. Now the 90 plus, there are some people who are the oldest living. Carson Henry, but he's listed as 111 years old. I think I might need to go make some corrections, especially since Beatrice Mur Muriel is 120 years. So it's nice to come here because this is kind of an analyzer of your information 
And then when you get it correct, then you can see some fun facts. Who lived the least? Who lived the most? Average life expectancy, 66 years. Oh, I hope I, hope I can outlive the average. And just go ahead and explore. They even have one about your zodiac signs. <laughs> How many of the zodiacs do you have in your tree? So if you're into that kind of thing, let me know. And if you want to tell me your zodiac sign, go ahead and drop that in the comments section. So that's kind of fun and you get that from the family statistics. You can invite family members to participate in your tree and then you can see some other site members. So I'm going to skip that for now. My family tree goes back to that, that um, pedigree view of your tree. The photos goes back to the gallery. You can upload a GEDCOM and start a new tree on Family Search. And then here's when you can manage your trees. On managing your trees, you can edit the tree settings. You can download a GEDCOM and you can export it to other locations as well. Did you know there's more on the family tree part? More pretty cool tools. They're kind of hidden and you want to go explore them. The first one is the pedigree map, and it takes it a little while to load, but we're gonna go ahead and explore it. Now, you have to hover over the bar and click more, and then click the map. So be careful with your clicking. So my heritage is going to go through your tree and see how many people appear in the different locations. So you have to click on the locations to start adding them to the tree. All right, so there's your plus and minus to zoom in. I've added Ohio to the tree, I mean to the map. Now I can go add Canada and I have to zoom out again. <laughs> so there are my Canadians. And there's my Ohio clan. Um, there was a little bit of migration down here, not a ton. But that's really cool that you can see where your ancestors are um, from. Now we can look at the consistency checker. On the consistency checker, I can see some problems in my tree. So the first one I have an unknown Kleba was born about 1863, but this is after the death of her mother. I have a problem in my tree that I need to go try to investigate. So you're gonna see data errors, child born after death of parents errors. You're gonna have alive but too old. Girl was um, is not marked as deceased and is 115 years old. So that means I'm lacking a death date for this individual or I need to mark her as deceased and I, I can do that from this field right here. Now, let's say you have somebody in your tree and you want to figure out how you're related to them. So you can put the source individual, we can pick me, and then I can type in any name. Let's see if I have a Samuel Jefferson Ross. I can display my relationship and it shows that Samuel Ross married a great aunt and then I can come down my tree. So that's kind of a cool way to see how you relate it to different people. You just type in their names. They have to be in your tree in order for this to work. And then you have sources in, in this view. You just see all the sources that you have attached to your tree. And then you can go and review those. And then from that source, you can see who it was attached to. The final, this is a lot of things under the, my, the family tree icon that or menu option that I'm sure that you haven't explored. Now the backup service, this is a new technology by um, MyHeritage, it's the Tree Vault, and you can pay additionally for this service and it will be a backup to the information you put in the tree. So again, these are the discoveries and I am just gonna skip over this. Then you have your menu for DNA. Um, we're not gonna spend too much time on that, but that's where you're gonna go for DNA. If you've subscribed for the health part, you can go here. 
And then finally, way over here, is when you can do your research. You can search all records, or you could go to the card catalog and see what my heritage has for newspapers, and you can drill down to US newspapers and so on and so forth. Or you can go to a search form that's just gonna look for birth, marriage, and death information. One more thing that I want to call your attention to is if you need to change my heritage to a different language, again, here's a second opportunity to do that there. But there's the Help Center. In the Help Center, it gives you a portal to all the different types of resources you may need in order to um, work on your account and your subscription information. You also have a Knowledge Base Center. And I really think they should rename it to their My Heritage education center. This is where they're going to have lots of articles and webinars on how to use their services. Now what's also great is a lot of this training will be in your native language. So those of you who watch from Brazil or from France or the other languages that I showed you earlier, a lot of this training is starting to become available in your native language. How cool is that? So there you have it. That's a brief overview of the MyHeritage website. If you have specific questions on how to use MyHeritage, go ahead and let me know. To find more videos on how to research MyHeritage DNA, clip right up there at the top. And to find more videos about how to become a better researcher, click right here.